It was at Essen Park. There must have been a, a day when you were a young lad and you kind of looked across the, the pitch and a, as a very young boy and, and thought to yourself, well, you know, one day if I've got enough money. Do you know what I mean? Did, did that, ever, that idea ever form in your head even then? No, no. Really? I think uh, uh, being brought up in a, on a council estate in Middlesbrough, your options were cricket and football, that's what you did. And uh, I was around at the time of black and white telly. <laughs> Nowadays it's 24 hours, but I think you used to, you used to get them over the evening and TV didn't start till about six. Yeah. So the option was, was football, and that's what you did at school. Yeah. And uh, so my, my early days we, we going to Middlesbrough games were infrequent because I, I was either playing for the school team or playing for the boys' brigade or, mm. or playing locally. And my father used to take me when I wasn't playing or if the game was cancelled. Uh -huh. So, is your father a fan? Uh, my father died uh, about six years ago, uh -huh. but he was a big fan and he was right. a, a real keen player as well. Uh -huh. And uh, I can remember going to watch my dad play, and he'd go and play on Saturday morning, and then, and then it was off to see the Borough play. Yeah. So, wow. No, so it, it, it will stem from the family. I got family, involved didn't it? really uh, out of frustration. I think uh, the, the, the club was absolutely going nowhere. I'd been under the chairmanship of Charlie Yama, mm. who'd. Who, who, wrecked the club mm. um, and then when I got involved uh, it was really um, it was a plea from Middlesbrough Council down. Sure. Um, and, and when you you know when, when the idea of, of becoming a director formulated in your head because by then your business uh, had started to really start to do things for you yeah my football my, my business was 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 really moving and I, but I was still playing and uh, I dropped down a few pegs uh, from, from the level I was playing at because I didn't have the time to train Mm -hmm. But I was still playing local football, and I was approached uh, by Mike McCullough. Yeah. Okay. And Mike said, look, um, we, we've got all kinds of problems. He said, I've inherited these problems, I'm doing my best, but I need, I need some help. And at the time, the board consisted of, of uh, there was eight, nine members, and quite frankly, they, 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 they were worse than useless. They were third-generation shareholders. So yeah. The great-great-granddad had bought shares in Middlesbrough Football Club in 1870. Mm. And, and they'd kept control, mm. irrespective of uh, what they had to offer the club. Mm. And Mike McCullough did his, his best. I, I, um, I've always been a fan of Mike McCullough, mm -hmm. but he just didn't have the resource to, to turn Take it around. It yeah. And uh, I asked, um, I couldn't see any way that the, that the board, as it, as it was structured, could save Middlesbrough Football Club. Mm. And I said to them, look, uh, I want full executive powers to run this football club, mm -hmm. and there was a huge, uh, very ugly debate and discussion, and the thought I was above myself, and I said the alternative because of your age, probably, just because uh, perhaps that had something, that was perhaps seen as a bit of an upstart, mm -hmm. and I, and I hadn't learnt the art of diplomacy, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I said to them, look, I walk out of that door, I don't come back. So they agreed, they actually agreed to give me um, full executive powers. So I sacked them all. Great.